Warning, this content may be disturbing to some audiences. Subscribe. If you dare. I went to an empty room and stood in the dark for 45 minutes to avoid a team bonding event. Hey everybody, welcome to, an Actost. People ask Reddit. Shy slash introverted people of Reddit, what is the furthest you've ever gone to avoid human interaction? Number 1. Commenter. Was 5 minutes late to school so I decided to skip school altogether that day to avoid the awkward class entry. Person B. I once failed a class for this very reason. I was about 15 minutes late to take a final because the bus had issues, and I got to the school and turned back around because I could not go through with walking in while everyone was seated and you're stared down. Person C. I have definitely done this after leaving to go to the bathroom mid-class. The teacher asked where I went the next day and I just told him the truth, which he was kind enough to understand. Number 2. College. Had to attend an out-of-town conference with my classmates as part of the requirements for a course. My professor had booked a block of rooms at the hotel where the conference was held, and people were going to put three to four guys or girls to a room and split the cost. My classmates had a bunch of socializing and bar hopping planned, which sounds like my idea of a living hell. Also, all of them carpooled together in groups. I honestly would have rather walked barefoot across a mile of Legos than to be held hostage in a car for four hours with people I barely know. A few people asked if I wanted to carpool with them and what room I was in and I said oh, thank you so much, I'm actually staying with a friend in town though, and I'm stoked to see her. I'm going to have to take my own car so I can drive to the conference. I'll catch you guys there. So I wouldn't come off as a weirdo. But I actually reserved a room at another hotel way across town, attended the bare minimum of the conference, and enjoyed as many coffee shops, art museums, downtown shopping trips, and nature trails as I could. Number 3. Commenter. Back when I had roommates I didn't know very well, I'd spend all day in my room without meals to avoid awkward pleasantries. Then I'd get really hungry but the prospect of explaining why I'd spent all day in my room kept me inside. Then they'd text me and ask if I was okay, and I'd say yep. Just keeping busy with some projects. And they'd ask if I'd eaten anything since they hadn't seen me, and I'd say yep, trust me, I'd never go without food. Then I'd wake up at midnight and steal my own food from the fridge. Person B. I've done the same thing except I already knew my roommate pretty well he just had some company over that I did not want to talk to so I stayed in my room for two days except for at like 3 or 4 in the morning when I would sneak out to get food from 24 hour fast food joints. Person C. I live with two other people and the living room in the kitchen, and is connected to every room, including the bathroom. One of the boring roommates just sits in the living room watching shitty TV shows the entire day and I often go without eating until he goes to bed. When I hear that he is leaving to go outside or into his own room I immediately go to the bathroom. I come home from university earlier than him most days so I usually find a way to stock up on food in my room so I don't have to leave. I don't have anxiety but it is just so painfully awkward to prepare food while he is staring at me and we have literally no common interest to talk about. Person D. Did that for the first weekend and a bit when I moved into my place for college. I'm shy and sort of introverted I guess, I'm never sure. But the first little while or so there were friends of my roommates over every night, and having to go down and have everyone stare at me was terrifying. I'm horrible at introducing myself, sometimes I can have no problem, other times I clam up, and I automatically offload anything I might have to say. I'm not good at sounding interested either. So I just stayed in my room all weekend, and most days after class. Person E. When I started grad school, I was in an apartment with five to six other folks, five of them classmates. Didn't really eat the first few days, dinner at 12 to 1 a.m., just because. Although I reverted to normal times once I got to know them. Then, I had to share an apartment in another city I moved to. Repeated the same multiple times. One night I could hear sounds of people and thought it was a party arranged by flatmates and I skipped dinner entirely, only to find out it was the other apartment which had hosted it. Number 4. Commenter. In high school I didn't have a car so I walked home. I used to just fast walk to try to beat the crowd of people, but I just didn't want to deal with it anymore so I would stay in the computer lab sometimes and ask my dad to pick me up a few hours later. So once the bell rang to go home, I would just stay in class since I had computers last. The teacher would forget I was in there slash not even notice me and then turn the lights off, lock the door, then leave. Honestly I didn't mind at all, I got to play video games by myself and one time about an hour and a half later the janitor came in and I guess I scared him. He turned the lights on and literally screamed when he saw me. Person B. 
I find such comfort being alone in what's supposed to be a public space. Back at my old school, there were old unused lecture halls at floor 2 with open doors, and nobody ever went there. I'd go there to study on my own or take a nap between classes, and having an entire giant amphitheater just to myself felt so relaxing. In my five years there I've never told anyone else about it. Number 5. Commenter. Rather than associate with my nosy aunt when I lived with her, I told her I was going out for a while, moved my car up the street, and sat in it watching Netflix on my phone for a couple hours. Person B. I used to do this with my roommate. Every time she was home she would talk and talk and talk. So I would leave before I expected her to be home, park at Starbucks, and watch Netflix until her normal bedtime. Number 6. Commenter. I went to an empty room and stood in the dark for 45 minutes to avoid a team bonding event. Person B. I left a job at a large firm almost purely because of so many team building events, training where you have to do crap in front of others, demonstrations, and networking events with coworkers slash management. I got so sick of these monthly and quarterly events that between the ridiculous hours I worked and that garbage, I took off for a job at a smaller firm where I didn't have to do that crap. There are freaks out there that actually prefer that kind of stuff. Like, they like it. I, too, would rather stand in a dark room. Person C. In fifth grade I would go to get water from a fountain, wait until my teacher led the rest of the class out of the building when we would leave for music class and then sit in the bathroom stalls for the whole 45 minutes. I just really didn't want to do choir and have to sing in a concert. When the bell rang for music to be over, I would just get back in line with everybody else when we waited outside for our teacher to come to get us. I did this every week. In retrospect it was really dumb idea but they never took attendance in music class so the teachers never found out. Some classmates knew but never snitched. Lucky me. Number 7. Commenter. In 7th grade I would hide in the science lab during lunch and recess time and feed and play with the school pets. I would ask to use the bathroom around 10 minutes into lunch and then come back in the last 2 minutes, they probably thought I had some real bad bowel issues. They were two birds, a bunny, and two guinea pigs. I would feed them carrots and talk to them. Nobody knew that I was there for half of the year when one of my teachers finally walked in on me I thought I was busted. Luckily she was one of the nicer ones and made it my official job to play with and feed the animals. Person B. When I was in high school, I used to hide in the basement bathroom of the English building, on the floor of the handicap stall. I'd read books or do crossword puzzles to pass the 30 minutes before my next class. Then, when I finally started an art class, which was down the hall from my shitty situation, the art teacher used to let me spend lunch in his classroom. We would do crossword puzzles together every day. Person C. In senior year high school, I used to hide behind the first floor staircase, this dark little corner, or the staircase, behind a short wall, that goes up to the attic. Then my British literature teacher found me. She would invite me to her office and we'd chat about novels. She's my favorite teacher. I first got into the college where she went to grad school. She even visited me once during a conference there. But then I transferred to another more prestigious school because I wasn't happy at the first one. Since then, I've never contacted her again. I thought that if I do, I'd have to bring up the fact that I transferred, and that might come off as being disrespectful of her alma mater and hurt her feelings, she was happy I went there. Now I think what I've done is childish and want to reach out to her and explain what happened, but still feel too shy about it. Person D. I was a freshman in HS at a brand new school in a brand new state. The first day at lunch I ate in a bathroom stall because I was so terrified of sitting at a table by myself. A few weeks into the year, somehow I had gotten a hold of a stack of hall passes that was supposed to be signed by teachers when used. For a while I was able to fake one of my teacher's signatures so that I could spend lunch in the library. Eventually I got caught of course, but he was so awesome that he signed off on a pass for the rest of the semester. Thanks Mr. Duncan, I'll always remember you. Number 8. Commenter. I stopped talking for an entire year of school. Fifth grade, to be precise. Person B. My parents moved me to a different country when I was 10, and for the first year and a half I was so painfully shy that I didn't say a single word to anyone. I still made friends, I just didn't say anything more than yes no and thank you. One day I finally got up the courage to ask the girl next to me for a pen and she called the teacher and said sir. She spoke. Dot. Not to be a then everyone clapped person, but they actually did. Person C. We moved right before fourth grade. About halfway through the year I forgot my lunch and you had to stand up and say which cafeteria lunch you wanted. The teacher got the whole class to applaud. I never forgot another lunch. 
He called my mom to discuss my lack of talking in school and she told him I only spoke to people I liked. Person D. Same here. It started in late 4th grade and continued till about midway through 6th grade. I carried around a little notepad to write answers to simple questions and everything. I sat alone at lunch my entire 5th grade year. At one point parents of other kids in my grade and the grades around me called the school worried about my behavior. My parents and I had to go to a meeting with the principal and my teachers and all that. When asked why I was being a weird little effer I responded, I can learn more from watching people than talking to them. Still truthful, but I actually talk to people now kinda. Person E. I did this during my first two years of high school. At around the same time, I decided to volunteer at the library with my sister and this sometimes meant speaking to other people who went to our school as well. We were about three or four meetings in when I finally said something. One of the kids that has always been on my bus route turns to me and says, holy shit, she has a working voice box. Make sure to share your personal story in the comments below and have the opportunity to be featured in a future video. Also, if you like these topics don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to continue seeing more content like this every day. See you next time.